Gary, how do you assess that one today? A frustration, really. Uh, I suppose analysing the full game, Partick Thistle probably deserved their victory. The first half I thought was pretty even. I thought we were the better team for the first 10, 15 minutes. I thought, uh, but we never got a goal when we were on top. Partick were probably the middle part of the first half or the 15 to 30 minutes, 35 minutes. They got on top and they got a goal. I'd need to watch it again first because it, it wasn't a good goal looking at, you know, it wasn't a strike for 20 yards or somebody cutting you open. So I need to watch that again. And then I thought towards the end of the first half, we got back on top. So I didn't think it was a lot in the first half and I thought we were unlucky to go behind. Obviously for the last 10 minutes of the first half, Josh was limping away. Uh, the boy made a great challenge, but just opened up Josh's knee a wee bit and we had to take him off at half time. So that's obviously a blow on top of not having Callum and, uh, and Nicky. So you're, coming to, you're playing part of this on the second half and you, and you know that you've not got these three players that can make a difference to you in a, in a game such as this. And that's a frustrating thing for me. It's known that we were, if we were without the aim and Patrick cut us open and scored a second or a third and a fourth and a fifth, but it wasn't, that wasn't the case. We lost the second goal because we weren't set up on a, a, a throw-in. So regardless of who's missing, we should be better set up to deal with a throw-in than we weren't. The lad finds his cell in the box to cross the ball. Scott Mercer gets a wee bit unlucky. I think he hits it off of their player and it goes into the net like a ricochet. So I'm frustrated because the second goal sort of killed the game. And we had spoke about half-time that we always think if we're in the game 1-0 with 15, 20 minutes to go that we got a chance. Now, I'm not saying that that would have happened, but if the game's still 1-0, we've ended up getting a penalty, you get a point, and it could be one of the best points that we've picked up this season. So my frustration isn't with the players' efforts or what they gave us, or how, uh, you know, Connor done on the pitch, or how Owen done when he came on, and we Dean even, you know, Dean playing doing it great now, up until the window... Uh, reopened and we brought him back and he's came against Partizan so my frustration is now with these lads you know they done fine in the game my frustration is not being set up at a throw and this probably cost us getting a valuable point It's not something that Queens have suffered from that No that and that's why I didn't want to go on about it too much I'll show them it and we'll try and correct it and make sure it doesn't happen again but it's one thing that we sort of pride ourselves on that we don't lose a lot of goals for set plays um, so it happens, you have, to, you have to regroup, you have to watch the video you have to go back over the organisation and make sure it doesn't happen again and that's what we'll do. Uh, there'll not be a lot of clips that we'll watch because we need to move on to Tuesday's game, but we'll watch the goals back because, as I said to you, they didn't look good goals from my point of view. Maybe Partick will say they were good goals from their point of view, but from my point of view, they looked scrappy goals that were avoidable. And when you're missing key players that um, can maybe help you control the game a bit better than we did today, it's vitally important then that your organisations... I'll not say 110% because there's no such a thing, but you've got to be bang on the money with your organisation to make sure that when you're missing key players that can help you control the game, that a team's got to do something really special to get a goal against you. And we've never done that today, and that's a frustrating thing. We know that Callum's injured his ankle, and that's why he was missing, but what about Nicky? What's well, Nicky felt his groin about 80-odd minutes up at Dundee. He's had groin problems in the past. He, he, he knows his body. And my honest thing is with him, he'll be 50-50 for Tuesday. That's me being honest. I don't know if he'll play. If he gets to 70, 30, 80, 20, there's a good chance he'll take a risk with him. And then we'll just have to deal with the Falkirk game the following week. Uh, Callum is making good progress, probably better than expected. Again, he's maybe 50-50 to get on the bench on Saturday to get, uh, Tuesday to get us a bit of cover. Um, so that's the two. The unfortunate one that we've picked up the day is Josh who definitely won't make it. He's opened up his knee a little bit and, and I don't think Josh is going to make it. So, if we're without these three players, it makes the task doubly hard. You know, I went and watched Dundee against Hearts and they put on a completely different performance than they played, performance than they played against us. They were excellent, they deserved their win, they put Hearts under pressure and they could have scored more than the two goals they scored. So, that already, in my mind, told me it was going to be a harder game than we faced at Dens. If we're without these three key players, it makes it doubly harder. But if that's the case, it's then up to us to try and get the younger lads prepared as best as they can because they're going to need to go on and play. It was a very young bench today. and Probably the youngest being, bench in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> and not being critical of them at all because, as you say, they, they've given everything today. But is that an example of just how frail the, the squad is? Yeah, but that's not, a, that's not a blame to anybody else apart from myself. I chose to try and build a squad with versatility and, quantity, and qual quality, rather, versatility and quality rather than quantity. And this season it's been fine. We've only been running along, picking up one injury, a six-weeker, and we get them back, and then we may lose another one for two or three weeks. But today, in terms of trying to put a normal stamp on the game, it probably butt us on the bum, especially when Josh went off, because he's arguably been the best wide midfield player 
this season and in the last five or six weeks you'd struggle to find a better wide midfielder in the league so we missed him when he went off and, it, and missing him and Nicky especially because you know Michael's played a lot of games at centre half so you know yes we miss Callum just his experience but Mike, Michael's played a lot of games for us at centre half but I think Josh and Nicky not being on the pitch made it harder for us to control the game like we have done especially in the last three or four games or the three games especially when Nicky's been at the club so Yes, we missed them. To put, we missed them in the fact that we couldn't control the game like we normally do. Nicky and Josh missing, missing wasn't the reason that we conceded the second goal. We weren't set up at a throne, and that for me has to be better. The window's still open. You're still trying to bring in. It's no good for Tuesday, no. but you're still trying to bring players in. No, and the one player that we tried to bring in for today picked up a slight injury in training and actually made that he wasn't available. So. So we had to put that in the back burner a wee bit and we'll try and pick that up again on Monday or Tuesday. As you say, he won't be able to play if we get him in the cup game. Anybody won't be able to play in the cup game because for the fans that don't know, anybody that wasn't signed before the original game can't play in a replay. So, but we do need to add one or two. We're actively trying. I don't want to do what, what I've done last year. I want to try and get our first choice targets that, for me, I'll have a really good chance of forcing our way into the starting team rather than bringing maybe younger players that would boost the squad. And that's still my, what I'm trying to do. Um, obviously, if we can beat Dundee, I would hope that we'd be able to add more than one. But, you know, so in terms of me trying to add to the squad, that game actually has got a big significance in what I can do. But we're hopeful that we'll be able to add one for Monday or Tuesday and he'll be announced and that we'll be able to get him into the squad for Saturday. Because if we take the risk with, with Nicky and Callum, it may be that they've not got to be fit for the Falkirk game. I think the state that they're in just now, to ask them to play two games in four days, it's going to be a big, big ask. So we need to just see how they recover. But at this moment in time, both of them are bang on 50-50 to, 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 to be involved on Tuesday. With that in mind then, is it worth taking the risk? Well, you know, you, I don't, you have to speak to the player. Every player's different. Players know their bodies. They, they all, and inevitably, they'll make the decision. They'll give me their feedback. Gavel has had feedback. But at the end of the day, I won't force a player to play that's not 100%. The decision will be up to the two lads, and if they decide it's no right for the team and that they shouldn't play, they'll not play. It's as simple as that. They're both experienced players that know their bodies, so they'll make the decision, really. Um, but, you know, that's what it is. That's football. You need to just dust yourself down and batter on with it. If they're not available, we need to get the... It's part of the reason why Connor came off. I was sort of thinking it that. He's not played a start. It's his first start of the season. He's played 75 or 80 minutes. I know that Callum's struggling. I know that Nicky's struggling. I know that Josh is out. So I have to make sure that Connor doesn't even maybe pull a muscle in the last 10 minutes or something just due to his lack of game time. So that was the reason that we took Connor off. Nothing in his performance. You're already thinking about, well, we could be a few missing for Tuesday, you know, and a few more of these lads maybe find themselves on the bench. You've already kind of touched on that Dundee game. There will be a different side. Oh, they are, the yeah. One. And listen, that's what I like about Jim McIntyre. I heard a few managers, uh, the Premier League managers, saying that the break caught them out and stuff. Jim never ever said that. What he said was we were a better team, deserved to win the game, but they were delighted still to be in the cup. He could easily have said that. He was maybe probably thinking that the break wasn't good for them, but he never said it, so I like that about him. And uh, that game on Tuesday night definitely showed, that, uh, Wednesday night def against Hearts, definitely showed that they had got any rustiness out their legs. And they, as I say, they played, put in a really, really good performance. And, and that, I was already, for you interviewing me, you knew that I was a wee bit frustrated that we maybe have missed our chance in that first game because generally when you give a Premier League club a second bite at the cherry it comes back to bite, bite you in the bum but it's a Tuesday night it's under the lights we've not had many of them since I've been at the club at Palmerston I enjoy that I like playing under the floodlights um, uh, we've had a good home record this season I think we've only lost a couple maybe a, too many draws for my liking but we, we've got, generally got a good home record we, we, know, we know how to play the surface it's something that Dundee don't know so anything that we can use in our favour, we have to try and use it. But I think the most important thing is the, is the day is to acknowledge that every player on that pitch gave us a lot today. I can't ask any more as a manager. Yes, I can ask for a wee bit more quality on the ball. We kicked out the pitch two or three times when we weren't under pressure. Yes, you can ask for things like that, but the fundamentals that you ask your player every week to do, they gave us. They gave the lot. We were pushing like mad to try and get an equaliser. You know, the penalty lifted us a wee bit. Party got a wee bit fragile, and we pushed and pushed. And I didn't expect anything else for this group of players. Um, so for Tuesday, I can't help them. It's my job to try and help them build the squad up for, for Saturday's game.